quadratic equation. The second degree expression in one variable is assigned to a particular value, then it is called quadratic equation. For example, ax square plus bx plus c is a quadratic expression. When it is assigned to a value that is 0, when ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0, then this is called a quadratic equation. So a quadratic equation, the condition to call it as a quadratic equation, a should not be equal to 0. If a is equal to 0, then it becomes bx plus c is equal to 0, which is a linear equation because the, the highest power of x is 1. We'll have always two zeros or two roots. The two roots may be real and different. The second one, they may be real and equal. The third one is imaginary. The quadratic equation can be represented with the help of a parabola. When we plot a graph, for y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c, you will get a parabola. That parabola may cut the x-axis at two different positions. In that case, it gives two roots. Here, in this case, it gives both the two positive real numbers. Suppose if the equation cuts like this, then this and this one negative root and one positive root. Suppose if, if the parabola is exactly touching the x-axis at one point, rather we can say if the x-axis is the tangent for that parabola, then equal and real roots will be there. Both x1 and x2 are same. These two are real and at the same time they are equal. The other case that the parabola may not touch the x-axis at all. In this case it will have no real roots. Now let's talk about how to solve this quadratic equation. So when any second order equation is there, if you have x square is equal to 25, then immediately we will be able to say x is equal to plus or minus 5. That means if you are able to write in a perfect square, then immediately you will be able to find out the roots. So now let us try to write the ax square plus bx plus c in a perfect square. So, in this case, if it is equal to 0, then we can divide throughout by a. Then, x square plus b by a x plus c by a is equal to 0. To write this in a perfect square, x whole square plus we have to write one 2ab term. So, 2 times this is acting like a and then by writing what term we will get exactly b by a. So, for that we have to write b by 2a so that this 2 is cancelled with this 2 and then bx by a which is required term for us. Now, we require 
b by 2a whole square as it is not there we have supplied from our side you have to subtract it also so that the original value of the equation is unchanged now this last term p by a this is all equal to 0 now what we can say this is x plus b by 2a whole square this is a square plus 2 into a into b plus b square is available with us now this is minus b square by 4 a square and this is c by a this is all equal to 0 now x plus b by 2a whole square is equal to b square by 4a square minus c by a. Now, if you take the LCM 4a square then it becomes b square minus 4a c. Now here x plus b by 2a can be written as square root of b square minus 4ac whole by 2a because 4a square root is 2a and this should be written with plus or minus. Now this b square minus 4ac is called discriminant. So here x is equal to this minus b by 2a plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac whole by 2a. Now I can take 2a as LCM and the numerator will be minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4a c. So this will give us two roots 1 x is equal to minus b plus square root of b square minus 4a c whole by 2a. The other root minus b minus square root of b square minus 4ac whole by 2a. This root we call it as alpha and this we call it as beta. b square minus 4ac is called discriminant. Let us represent with d. Now we can write alpha as minus b plus root d by 2a and beta minus b minus root d by 2a. Now if you add the two roots that is alpha plus beta, we get this root d minus root d will be cancelled minus 2b by 2a which is equal to minus b by a. That means in any quadratic equation, the sum of the roots is always equal to minus times the coefficient of x divided by the coefficient of x square. Now, if you talk about the product of the roots, alpha, beta, which gives us 
this is looking like a plus b and this is looking like a minus b therefore it would be a square minus b square that is minus b whole square minus root d whole square that is b square minus 4ac whole by this 4 a square 2a into 2a now it's going to be b square minus b square plus 4ac whole by 4 a square now you can cancel out this and finally you will get an expression t by a so alpha beta is equal to the constant term in quadratic equation divided by the quotient of x square now if we look at this equation if you look at this equation it is clearly appearing as if it is x square minus minus b by a times x plus c by a is equal to 0 therefore we can say that x square minus sum of the roots times x plus product of the roots which is equal to 0. So this is another form of writing. This is the other form of writing any quadratic equation. Now let's write the conditions for getting the real roots and imaginary roots. When b square minus 4ac is greater than 0, then the quadratic equation will have real and different roots if the discriminant b square minus 4ac is equal to 0 then real and equal roots when b square minus 4ac is greater than 0 then we get imaginary roots